Material scientist Dr Johnny Drain likes to wonder what things could be made of. Whether it's a smartphone screen, the Michelin star restaurant dishes he's created, or wanting to figure out how to replace cocoa. This is the lab on the boat where the chocolate story begins. Oh, wow. Come on board. Thank you. What's this? So this is um, some of the ingredients that we started developing the chocolate with. Kinky salts. Kinky salts. <laughs> That's various funky salts from different places all over the world on my travels. Dried shrimp. That's not in the chocolate, is it? That is not. And there's some raw cacao, which we were trying to imitate at the very start. But of all the things we try to find replacements for, cocoa may not be an obvious one. What most people don't realise about cocoa and chocolate is that um, about 70% of it is produced in just two countries in West Africa, Ghana and Ivory Coast, in a way that involves outsized water consumption, so about 20,000 litres of water per kilo, and that's way more than beef or soy or avocados. And there are issues with labour in those parts of the world. At a conservative estimate, it's thought that 1.5 million children are on these cacao farms working with their families predominantly. Is this however not taking away income from countries that really need it? Those countries do need that income and those hard-working farmers need to be supported but the state of the current cacao and chocolate industry is such that those those people are working on a dollar or less a day and it's not an equitable trade. So this is Johnny's story. But I grew up in Birmingham near the Cadbury's chocolate factory so sometimes we could smell the the roasting beans and it was delicious. So I've always eaten a lot of chocolate. And I started thinking, why does chocolate taste like chocolate? And, you know, when you, if you put your scientist hat on, it's just a bunch of compounds and it's quite complex, but essentially it's just a bunch of compounds. And then thinking, well, can you make that flavor profile starting from something that's not cacao beans? Could you start with potatoes or rice? And what is it made from? Well, we can't tell you the secrets of exactly what we do, but our hero ingredients are barley, which has this you know, rich tradition of being used to make whiskey and beer, and also carob. And we found using this combination of fermentation and roasting, which is what you do to turn cacao into chocolate, we've taken that principle, that philosophy, and turned these ingredients into our alt choc. <laughs> And that magic of mixing now happens in the lab. Talk me through the process. Where does it all start? Uh, melt the fat if, uh, if it needs melting, and then just mix it all in the melanger. So it keeps grinding for 48 hours. And after that, yeah, we just proceed to temper the chocolate and, and mold it. So this machine's got to keep going for 48 hours? Yeah, that's correct. It looks like it's pretty well mixed now after about 20 seconds, but that's not mixed. No, it's not, because it's all about the particle size. So you want to have like the smallest size as possible, so you get a nice mouthfeel in your mouth and you don't feel the different grains of the different ingredients. Wow, that's quite a process. Does normal chocolate go through something like that as well? Yeah, usually it's, it's around that time, a bit less, a bit more. It depends on the type of chocolate that you're having. OK, something I never knew about chocolate. No, it's, it's very uh, scientific, actually, yeah. That's science resulting in a mixture containing 15% less sugar than its chocolate equivalent. And it's full of antioxidants and flavonoids. But how does it taste? OK, that is looking particularly appetising, so I'll go for this first. Right, eating on camera is always very messy. Mmm. Absolutely delicious, but I genuinely wouldn't know that that wasn't cocoa. Amazing. It tastes, I would think that was about 60 to 70% cocoa. That's what we're aiming at with these ones, yeah. Yeah. And that is the chocolate that I like. So my daughter, who loves a kind of Cadbury's or Galaxy milk chocolate, I'm not sure how she'd feel about it, but for someone who is into dark chocolate, wow, I, I genuinely can't tell the difference. What's your price point going to be like? Initially, we'll go in at that, that level of luxury premium dark chocolate, but within two years, we aim to have price parity with mass-produced milk chocolate prices. And are you going to produce something which is more like the milk chocolate? We'll do both, and we might even do a, a white chocolate, ultimately. There are 
another couple of companies in this space too. But Win Win's bars will go on sale later this year. And they're not only for humans to enjoy. With no theobromine in it, unlike regular chocolate, you can give a piece to your dog if you can bear to part with it. Mm. Lovely.